I'm Darren Steele. I'm unfortunately a little under the weather at the tail end of very severe seasonal allergies, so my voice is as deep as it's probably going to sound. I want to offer some thoughtful, simple, helpful skills, some very easy practices to help you feel better, to help you manage in these very emotionally challenging times. Uh, there's war in the world. There's a lot of concern about what is happening with particular governments. There are murders happening en masse in the United States. There are huge threats against LGBTQ lives and in particular trans lives in the United States. There's so much uncertainty. We're three years into COVID. We've suffered two years of a lot of isolation, of separation from other human beings. We've lost a lot of that acceptance and connection and care that we get from in-person connection and conversation. And we're slowly coming back into that. But because there's been such a disruption, and because there are so many challenging things happening in the world at the same time, it's overwhelming. And even the best of us, even those of us who have the greatest capacity for rest and recovery or for taking care of ourselves, are going to face moments in time where we just can't take it anymore. And we need to recharge. We need to find a way to get back in tune with the kind of emotions that connect us with other people that allow us to feel compassion and empathy. And I was reminded of this this morning when I read an article someone wrote about how so many people's empathy tanks are running on empty. And this is based on what I've just said. So how can you do daily practices in your day so that you can feel better, so that you can protect yourself and manage your own level of stress or threat, so that you can keep yourself from going into some sort of a defensiveness or contentious kind of I want to argue back at situation. How can you find your inner calm, your peace of mind, so that you can be the best leader in your day, in your work, but also when you return home for your family, for your friends, for your partner, for those other people you care about. So here's about six different simple skill sets you can practice. First one is nature. If you can get into nature every single day, can you walk to work and you walk through a park, but take it in, put your phone in your pocket just for a few minutes, look at the trees, listen to the birds, Feel the temperature on your skin. Feel the sunshine if it's beaming down on you. All of these aspects of being in nature affect our neural physiology in a positive way. They make us feel good. We are of nature, and we, when we are in nature, we feel the most connected. We feel the awe of nature. Even if we aren't in front of some major waterfall, we just feel that connection to something greater than ourselves that has an effect on us that creates, even unconsciously, a sense of humility, a sense of connection. If you can't go outside, you can look out a window at nature. If you have a view towards trees or grass, take a few minutes and look at it and feel, go back into memory of rolling in the grass or walking through a park. It might not be as good, but you might surprise yourself at how it can make you feel those kinds of positive, empowering emotions. A second option, a second practice, very short meditation, 90 seconds to five minutes. One of the easiest ways is to close your eyes and listen. Allow what you hear to sort of take over and allow your hearing to be the sense of being just for a few moments and without any judgment. Whatever you hear isn't good or bad, isn't too loud or too soft, isn't pleasant or aggravating. It's just a sound. It's a wave in the air that impacts with your eardrums. That's all it is. And how you perceive it are all kinds of conditions and history and emotions. Just sense it for what it is and get a feel for you are there in the moment. Part of all of this 
and that hearing is a way to reconnect with everything that is outside of yourself, to allow yourself to realize that you are part of something that is much bigger than you. A third practice. Can we talk another time? You know, if you're having a hard day, if you're overwhelmed from the stress of work or from the frustration of seeing what's going on in the world, and somebody comes up and it's the default, right? Everybody wants to connect over what's pressing and what's bothering them. Can you say, I appreciate that you want to talk about this, but I just don't have the emotional bandwidth. Could we speak about this at another time? Thank you. And move on from there. Because if you don't have the emotional capacity or the wherewithal to respond accordingly, you're only going to get more aggravated and upset and you might move into a contentious argument. And that's also a lead into the worst place you can go is Twitter or Facebook to look at what your friends are saying about things like this. That's probably when it's the best time to know that you don't want to go to those sources of social media so that you can give yourself a break. The fourth option, get a hug. I know it can be really difficult in the workplace. There may be some challenges, but maybe you have some friends there who can, or if you're working from home, or if it's later on in your day, who can give you a really meaningful hug? And I'm not talking about, there you go, pat on the back, that's nothing. You might as well not bother. I'm talking about a full arms around you, side of your head against the other person's shoulder, that other person's head against your shoulder, or in the case of my partner and I, his chin will be on my shoulder because he's six foot three and I'm five foot eight. But nonetheless, it is the closeness. It's not sexual. It's the care to put yourself in the vulnerable, vulnerable position of being intimately supported or and or concurrently supporting that person. A meaningful expression and transference through touch that you care about this other person. The wonders that that does neurobiologically for how we feel, the positive endorphins that that releases is incredible. Two more, play. What can you do that's fun? Is there a board game that you can do for five minutes? Can you play a hand of cards? Does somebody have a dog at work that you can run out with? It doesn't matter. Can you watch silly cat videos on Instagram? You know, maybe you need to have a little feed on YouTube of your favorites and it's like silly cat videos or you know you've got like a top 10 um, funny moments on YouTube channel and you just go watch that for three, four, five minutes you laugh, you increase your positive endorphins, you feel better, and when you feel better, you can connect more with other people. Finally, this might seem counterintuitive, but go watch some episodes of This Is Us, or something like that, because sometimes seeing a really well-written TV series or a movie that gets deep into the universality of human emotions allows us to feel vicariously and sometimes allows us to feel, to let out, maybe even through crying or tearing up, things that we've been withholding because we're trying to be strong, we're trying to be a leader, we're trying to show up for other people, and that can be restorative. So which one of these did you find most helpful? Was there or is there a practice that you use that I haven't mentioned here because I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful.